Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly MMA talk show called Chokes and Eye Pokes. Before we go any further, please go and look for our Spotify link. We are now on Spotify. We're still on the grind to a thousand subscribers, so please make sure that you subscribe if you're not subscribed. And please make sure to share this far and wide, and we really hope you enjoy the show. I'm your host as always, Vern. I'm joined again by my co-host, Jack. Jack, interesting week Yeah. In MMA. Yeah, exciting one. Uh, there was definitely firefights. Um, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, it was it was interesting. Um, a lot of good fights. I think we should get straight into them. Um, you know, it was a card. I wasn't. I knew there would be close fights, but I wasn't too. I mean, it's a fight night. Let's be honest. Yeah. So, so there are some fights where you're like, okay, they'll be close, but probably won't be too exciting. But there were actually a lot of really really exciting fights. I yeah. mean, it started off uh, with Nazim Sadikov beating uh, Terence McKinney. By submission, Rene could choke in round two. What did you think of this one? Um, I didn't see that happening the way it did. Um, but yeah, I mean, like power to him. I, I think that he he definitely like dominated the second round in particular. Um, but yeah, I mean, good performance, like well deserved. Mm, no, definitely, it was more aggressive in round two for sure. Yeah. Um, I think, and that showed. You know, the cardio issue for Terence that we thought was gonna that I thought was gonna happen yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, Sadikov was just able to. <laughs> I capitalized. Capitalized, yeah. put a lot more pressure on him. So good performance there. Um, I got that one right. Uh, so it, it, it's one 0 for the for the week so far. Um, then we had Norma Dumont and Chelsea Chandler. We had Norma Dumont uh, winning by unanimous decision, thirty twenty seven. The only thing I'm going to say for this fight so far that comes to mind is that meme about why are you running? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was Chandler doing, man? Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, like it was a bit. I don't know. It was, it was quite sad to see. Mm. Well, I, I didn't. I don't know. I had more faith in that uh, in her, for, like for her performance. But yeah, yeah. I mean, she did okay in the end, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. It was it was a little bit odd. You're calling Ronda Rousey out, and then you're running away straight away. Yeah. I kind of I like that fight for Ronda. I yeah. think that it's the easiest in the top ten for her. I mm. think that it's like it's I don't know. It's easy payday. I think like also like ring rust has got to be a thing. Yeah. So like it's a good way to to get back into the top ten if she joins. A good tune up fight, I think it would be good. I don't know though. Ronda, listen, if you make it a dog fight, you make it ugly. That's Ronda Rousey's game, and it's it's getting in close and grappling. Yeah. She's powerful, powerful. Mm. Who knows though? She's been training wrestling, like not. Not Roman Greco wrestling. She's been trying to razzling. Yeah. So who knows? I mean, she will be rusty, but <laughs> yeah. Again, like you don't you don't lose your skill. It's just about fine tuning it again. So good fight for her, I think. Up next for Norma, what do you think? Um, oof. I would like to see her go for the title. I would like to see mm. her against like a Julia Pena or probably actually um an Irene Aldana. Mm -hmm. That would be really interesting. I think that that's like a very cool technical matchup or just like striking matchup. Mm. Um, yeah, what do you think? Also, what, title fight for sure. I think next. I mean, she's got the most wins in featherweight history now. Hectic. Or women's featherweight history. They were saying afterwards. So, oh. so I think it's a. I think yeah. I think that's that's a good fight for her. She definitely needs to fight for a title next. Like, there's no. I mean, I'm pretty sure if Ch if Chelsea Handler won this, they would be pushing her for a title. So yeah, yeah. Then we had uh, okay, so I got that one right as well. So it was two and zero. Uh, Park Jun Young defeated Albert Duria by submission. Uh, we said uh, 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 before this fight that was his key to victory was yes. was the subs and yeah. definitely pulled through. Um, the thing is that was nice was he 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 sort of went forward on his jab which I didn't expect yeah and he just broke him down systematically and put the pressure on him mm -hmm. and and got a slick slick finish. So that was that was something. You know, that was the coin flip last week. Yeah. Uh, we did the coin flip for that. So um, I thought Duryev would have enough. But yeah, man, Park just put put it on him. And he, he's got a nice string of victories now after yeah, that. honestly. And he, yeah, the ability to like implement the game plan like that, very impressive. Mm. Yeah, Four wins in a row. That's, that's his way he's up there now. So they asked him who he wants to fight next. I didn't really, I, I don't think I remember who he said he wanted to fight or if he said anybody, but... I didn't see the first fight. Definitely. Um, look, it's middleweight, so it's quite stacked. Um, I mean... At middleweight, we can get into it a little bit later because there've been call outs and things like that, and mm. and the title picture. I've got some opinions on that, but we'll, we'll we'll get to that later. But definitely, maybe a crack at somebody in that that top ten. Yeah, I mean, like, what's his rank now? I mean, he must almost be in the top ten. I think he was fourteenth. I think he was fourteenth or thirteenth or something like that. So mm. that's the next. I mean, the next logical step. I mean, if Bo Nickel isn't going to go like shooting for the stars just yet, that could be a cool fight. Mm. I mean, like a a nice like I mean more serious competition for him. Yeah, I'd like to see Bo Nickel sized up against some of the bigger guys mm. see how he sizes up because uh, that will tell you a lot you know because mm. the skill does translate 
you know, if you're a little bit small, it doesn't always translate. So that yeah. could be interesting to see. Okay, you got that one right. So 2-1, pulling one back there. Then Francisco Prado versus Otman Azate. Uh, that was another one which felt could have gone either way. I, w I was really leaning for Prado. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, and this is exactly why. I mean, man, what a performance! Yeah, but dude. A, like clinic, he was just like the like I don't know the pressure from that dude was insane. Mm. Yeah, no, like super dominant. Yeah, I mean, he's such a freak talent. He's twenty one years old, mm. and you look at how calm he was in that post fight uh, press conference. It was like I'm um, not press conference in in the in octagon the itself. Yeah, yeah, it was almost like they were shocked, not shocked that he won, but they were like, wow, and he was just kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know, yeah. it's supposed to happen. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, that was, the sky's the limit for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, there's fighters um, now that, we, that we're seeing, you know, Cameron's right up there as well. Yeah. Younger and younger every single time. And, you know, they're starting with MMA. Like Mike said, they don't have bad habits that they need to unlearn. They're starting with MMA and that's the sport that they're doing. And he's one of them. Yeah. Oh, the sky's really the limit for him. And exciting, exciting addition to all of the people at Lightweight that, that mm -hmm. are coming through. You know, after Islam, Poirier, Gaethje, Olivero, who's sort of towards the tail end of their career, maybe not Islam. Yeah. These guys are the next generation. Yeah. That's Him and like Jamal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, not Jamal. Um, sorry, the guy who just lost to uh, Dan Hooker. Yeah, uh, Jalen. Uh, Jalen, mm -hmm. yeah. Jalen yeah. Turner, yeah, but if he doesn't go to welterweight. Yes. But also you've got um, Armin mm -hmm. Sarukian. Sarukian yeah. yeah, he's also there, so... Okay, so you got the one back, pulling it back to 2-2. Two, two. Um, Jack de la Madalena and Basil Hafiz. We didn't actually have this one because yeah. it was a last minute. So the heavyweight matchup with Walt Harris um, got, yeah, he got, got busted. Canceled. He got oh. busted for, oh. it was a USADA. Yeah. Oh, hectic. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how long he's out for. I didn't see the details. I just saw he got busted for a band substance. So that, that one that one stopped. Uh, this was a last minute replacement. Split decision victory. Um, for so Jack, close. it was so close. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I really had it. Like either way, I, I didn't. If any name, like draw a name out of a hat, I, I wouldn't have known who to, who to give. And mm. then five days, five days notice for his opponent, which is also mm. like just really impressive. Mm. Yeah, Jack really warmed down. Um, and now he's got the most consecutive wins in welterweight. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I'd, I'd heard of him, but I haven't followed his stuff much because I, you know. I'll be honest, there's so many fighters like to try to follow now. Yeah. No, he's got the most consecutive wins um, currently in, in, in Walterwood. So good for him, good performance. Um, wasn't easy, but mm. got it done. So that one doesn't count. Mm. So we're two to two into the main event. Uh, Holly Holm let me down, man. Yeah. She got she got she got caught with a ninja choke, dude. Yeah. I was quite disappointed. I mean, look, it's a it's a legitimate submission, and and it's I mean that that thing was on tight. But yeah. usually, I don't know, man. She didn't have control of her body, and the angle. Okay, the angle was 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 not favorable for Holly Holm. But usually in those types of submissions, like you can get out. You can get out. I mean, even standing guillotines. Like I I could put a standing guillotine on a on a brand new white belt old tap. But like some some. White belts with some stripes would would find a way out of that and make it tough. You know, yeah. either drop to the floor and try to fight from there, fight the hands or something. But I don't know, man. That was... Um, I mean, like end of an era. Where did she go from here? That's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what Holly Holm does from here. I, I Like I say, I was, I was disappointed by the finish. And Holly Holm actually probably won that first round. Mm. Oh, um, yeah, um, yeah I, I would say. On the balance of things, yeah. I think. Yeah, I know. Okay, I do. I do agree. Mm. I mean, it was a competitive round, but mm. like he did do more. Mm. So now, what what are we saying for for Bena Silva? What do you think's next for her? Also, title. I mean, uh, yeah, I I would love to see that. I, I like um, yeah, the whole thing with her. Uh, I know she's got a great story. Mm. I think that like she's she's the type of character that would be really cool to see fight for a title. Mm. Yeah, she, I think she did call for it. She said it's her time now. I think again, momentum's behind her, like you said last week. Mm. So I think it's a good time. So. Looks like Juliana Penda's got some options, you yeah. know, as the last person to beat Amanda Nunes. Um, she she has options. I'm not a, I'm not a Pena fan anymore. Not after her outburst when when um, Amanda Nunes retired. Mm. Just she she seemed yeah. Let me rather reserve my words. So <laughs> so you got that one right, Jack. Um, unfortunately, I left the title belt at home. Yeah, exactly. so uh, just just one of those one of those. No, I'm joking. Congratulations. Yeah. This week you are the champ. Yeah. So Ooh. 
You can decide whether you... On the mantelpiece. Yeah, there we go. Congrats, Jack. Thank um, you. First, now one-time champion. So yeah. congratulations yeah. on that. Um, Long live the king. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you got the Conor McGregor winning, Conor McGregor winning style. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. There we go. There we go. Oh man. That about sums it up <laughs> right there. So, all right, let's okay. take this off. I think. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. I'll give it to you. I'll give it. Give it to you at the end. Um, my prize. <laughs> yeah. Congrats, man. <laughs> So, as we said last week, um, we in honor of Robbie Lawler, we're going to do Robbie Lawler's top five uh, fights of all time. So, this is our weekly top five. Jack, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I have, well, in number five, um, I have Robbie Lawler versus Manhoff. So, so, that was still strike force days. Um, I think that, that that overhand right that he gets him with is just like, I don't know, it's iconic. Um, and just like that whole fight was just like like a brawl fest. I mean, like, Robbie Brawler. I don't mm. like. I don't. Mm. I know that's a ruthless Robbie Lawler, but like I don't know. It was right there. Mm. Um, and then for number four, I have him versus Lindland. Um, Lindland. Lindland. Yeah. Lindland. Um, and also strike force days. I don't. That, that KO was crazy. And just to see, I don't know, it was like a battle. It was a real battle. And like the heart that Robbie showed mm. was just like, I don't know, phenomenal. Um, like definitely one of the best careers that we've seen. The longest. Mm -hmm. It's got to be around there. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. In at number three, I have uh, Robbie Lawler versus Hendrix one. I mean, like what a battle. He ended up losing. But in the fifth round, just like slugfest. And also, just the, he was smiling while fighting, which is just like, I don't know, the most Robbie Lawler thing yeah. that someone can do. And yeah, it was just a really like super entertaining fight. Um, yeah, just an uh, iconic like performance from him. Um, and yeah, in at number two, I have Robbie Lawler versus Nate Diaz 1, um, which he also lost uh, via, D, via TKO. Um, I mean, Yo, I, I have it at number two just because it set up the, the second fight as well. So it's kind of like a bonus one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just really amazing performance with like two of like like the phenoms of, of the sport at the time. It was just so massive. And yeah, uh, for number one, I mean, of course, of course, it's going to be McDonald too. Um, it's got to be, you know, there's there's that moment in leading into the fifth round, like at the end of the fourth, where he's like looks at him and like spits his blood and like he's ready for he's like ready to carry on fighting, and yeah, just the way that that fight ended, where it was, you know, like like one one lost, and then, you know, that was that's all she wrote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just like yeah, iconic. Yeah, iconic. Good list, man. Um, I think one or two of yours on my honorable mentions. Um, we've got a, a couple of the same ones, but I've gone for number five. I've gone Nick Diaz um, at UFC 47. Mm -hmm. I've only gone for it because he did he did end up losing. And it is like it was a mini upset because he was a slight favorite on on Nick Diaz. Mm. And there's that iconic moment where you just see Nick Diaz like saying, Stockton, Stockton. Yeah. Um, let's say the second word. And you just see Robbie Lawler's face like, <laughs> what the hell's going on? I mean, he dropped Diaz in that fight a couple of times. Yeah. He was beating him. But again, dude, Diaz is just so durable. And also, I mean, it was early on in their careers. I mean, Diaz was 20. So it's kind of more an iconic moment for Diaz, mm. but it was just so fun because Robbie Lawler, you could just see, even though he was like shook and taken back, he was just so game to fight. Yeah. So I've got that in in at number five. In at number four, I've gone for um, Robbie Lawler versus Manu from Strike Force mm. Miami. Um, man, Manu stormed him with shots in that in that fight, and this is where you saw the durability of Robbie Lawler for the not for the first time, but like really, really on display with someone strong mm. and seasoned storming him. And that really translated through to his later title run when he when he was in the UFC where it was like almost like you you couldn't knock him out. Like you talk about the McDonald fight, how many shots he took and other fights. So that started sort of for me the real I know Ruthless was his nickname before, but like that was like really, really ruthless moment. And it showcased his knockout power, which um took him took him quite far in his in his UFC career. Yeah. In at number three, I've gone for uh, Lawler versus McDonald one at UFC 167. I mean, this obviously set up the second fight because it was so close. It was a, a split decision victory. There was a back and forth, back and forth uh, contest. Lawler, I think it was, I wrote here because I saw it again, the moderate underdog. 
Um, and yeah, I think, you know, the momentum just started to go with Lawler uh, eventually. And it was a back and forth um, battle that set up yeah, the second, the second fight. Yeah. So that has to be in there. So in at number two, I've gone for um, Lawler versus Marillo Ninja Hua, which is Shogun's brother. Um, this is from Elite XC and I believe 2007. Um, for a couple of re uh, reasons. Um, first off, this was where Robbie Lawler also like showcased constant, constant pressure. Ninja being such a good jiu-jitsu practitioner, um, there was always a risk and Robbie Lawler just neutralized it. Mm. Like it, it didn't even look like he looked like he, it, it wasn't a struggle for him. Yeah. And it was really his first major title. I know he had a he had a, a title win previously in an organization, but Elite XC back then was actually a pretty big organization. Mm. And the KO itself, dude, is just scary scary so I that's seen that one that's in a number two yeah you should watch that one's that one's really good mm. um it, it's a bit old i mean the 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 clip clips and stuff are very hazy because it's it's six, 16 years ago but yeah. really really good and again in my honor, honorable mentions before i get to number one i've gone for the frank trigg fight um of course that is actually his first major well, first title not major title mm. and then i've also gone for the lin lin for exactly the same reasons that that you've gone in in a number one could it be anything mm. else it's got to be Lawler versus McDonald 2, UFC 189, which is in itself an amazing, amazing card, which we'll maybe cut to another another time. But yeah. dude, it was just a battle of wills. I mean, it was back and forth and it was like they were both having success. I mean, Robbie Lawler's lip was busted up. Mm. Rory McDonald's face was busted up. I mean, his nose in particular, it was bloody. It yeah. was ruthless, no pun intended. <laughs> and again, like you say, that iconic stare stare down at the end of round four is just insane and the fact that mcdonald wanted to continue but just couldn't i mean there was just one shot too many it just smashed his nose up completely to pieces so yeah. that has to be number one one of the greatest fights of all time and one of the greatest cards of all time yeah. for the title that's it settling the rivalry so that's my number one nice i like your list thank you yeah, yeah. so that was our weekly top five. Um, let us know your thoughts on the top five. Let us know what top five you want to see next week and um, who you have in your top five for Robbie, Wa Robbie Lawler's all-time fights. So um, I don't know if you saw the, the report. Ah, I sent it to you actually um, about Bo Nickel saying Dirkus is easy money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still, I really like that um, that fight for Dirkus. I don't like, I, I don't hype. Well, I don't hop on the on the hype train. I mean, Bo is really good. Absolutely. But like, I don't know. I, I heard someone call it um, the bow job. I think that was Sean Strickland. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah. But mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I, I, I don't think, well, I do think there's definitely a lot of hype around bow and like that, that feeds momentum. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know. I don't think that that kind of momentum, like um, when met with like Drekus's willpower, I, I think that uh, Drekus walks through him. And physical power. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He has look. He has to say that. Um, I mean, he. What's he gonna say? No, I don't like that fight. He's gonna kill me. Yeah. You know, he has to say it. But um, again, I'd still like to see. It's really gonna be nice to see now if Bo Nickel starts fighting guys in those top in the in the top ten. Yeah. Um, first off, skill wise, but then second of all, it's size. gonna be. I want to see the size. You know, he looks quite big. I mean, he looks like big for the weight class. Yeah, but uh, again, it's. I want to see him against those bigger guys because remember. I always go back to like a Conor McGregor, Chad Mendes fight. Mm. Okay, Chad Mendes, if he was the same size as McGregor, would. Pro I mean, okay, you can never say, but his wrestling and his power was not on the same level as uh, his. His power was not on the same level as McGregor's. Yeah. So you you can be how great at wrestling, but there is a power element to it. Like uh, people who say power doesn't matter, that's that's rubbish. Yeah. So if Bo Nickel is quite small compared to the to the top middleweights, it doesn't mean he can't have success, but it's going to tell us a lot because again, Robert Whitaker, very successful at middleweight, not really ever overpowered, and then you go against a guy like Rickers. Mm. and it shows and it feels like a, like an even bigger factor like at at this point it's like w w with people like Drekus and also mm. like um like Poirier you mm. know like he walks around like 190 or something mm. yeah I mean it makes a lot of sense also Conor McGregor like the amount of weight that he cut back in the featherweight days was insane yeah and that's why he was able to neutralize um, Chad Mendes. Look, Chad Mendes had some success on the ground with him but mm. I mean again he he was able to get up he got out of the guillotine and it, it I mean, he, he ended up powering to victory. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Um, I mean, obviously, Dirkus is now 
yeah, number one contender. Officially, Everyone's calling for his name. Yeah, officially yeah. number one. Um, so let's see what happens, man. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if Dukas is going to fight in September. I mean, the, the the UFC still needs to. Usually, they they're fairly quick with that. Mm. But I still think that turnaround time might be too quick. So who knows if if maybe now the UFC goes and they kind of messed up. They kind of messed up actually. Yeah, yeah with the, with this like booking. September. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because now now they have to have Izzy defending the title there because you've already bowled it that way. I mean, unless they can get someone else to fight, but will the Aussies want to see somebody else? Yeah, that's not Volkanovski. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, yeah. Oh, yeah, because of course, He's September is in, in Australia. It's in Australia. Yeah. So, so now they have, if they have to do a fuller match, you know, because because let's say the turnaround time's too quick for Drikus. Yeah. Um, like Strickland. Strickland. Yeah. Bro, it's a bit of a Im- throwaway one. It's a throwaway. It yeah. should be. But ima- could you imagine the scenes if Strickland wins? That's gonna <laughs> just stuff everything up <laughs> yeah. for the UFC because then they've got to do a straight rematch. Yeah. Right. So that's gonna stuff things up again. And then what are you going to have Dirkus sitting on the sidelines for months waiting? Because if I was him, if I was Dirkus, I wouldn't fight anybody else but the champion now. Yeah. And it's not because he doesn't want to fight or anything like that. It's you've earned your title shot. Izzy's not going to be around for long in that middleweight division. You have a chance to be the first person ever to beat Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya. Yeah. So wait, you know, wait yeah, for that shot. Absolutely. So who knows, man? Who knows what happens? Um, You know... Yeah, I, I mean, like it, it's. I don't know. I, I do leave it. Like, I think Coach Mane Fisa. I think that he's he's gonna make the best call. But if I was him, and I'm not, then I would just say, like, like no, like that's too soon. That because I mean, they, they they got back recently, like last couple of days. I think Cameron said they got back a couple of days after the after the fights. You know, so yeah. so let's say you take a holiday, um, even if it's to the end of this week. Yeah. That leaves you with like six, seven weeks. Yeah, and also to travel well, to Australia then oh. and acclimate. Like that's that's a big ask. Just like, cutting weight again. Yeah, like what's that? Like four? Well, that's like a five week camp to verse Israel Adesanya, which I don't know. I I, I don't think that's enough. No, like, I don't think it's fair on Dirkus, honestly. No, I think the UFC messed up. Honestly, I think if they make the Adesanya Strickland fight in Australia, the UFC now. Mm-hmm. We expect Izzy to beat Strickland. Mm. I mean, that if if Dirkus is a three to one underdog, uh, Strickland better be like a seven to one underdog. Okay. Yeah. That September, you either do not. You either do New York at the end of the year. November. I think it's in November. Yeah. You know what I think they should do. Mm? Please, UFC, do this. Oh, okay. I think Wait I for twenty twenty four. And book Israel Adesanya versus Dirkus Duplessis in Cape Town. Yeah. UFC Africa. Imagine. The views, the trend, Imagine. like everything. That fight, that fight, right? So that cage moment is at like 2 million views mm. on nine after nine days. Okay. There's parallels you can draw with, between Habib and, and, and uh, Connor. Connor. Yeah. If you want to make UFC Africa a success Your, and launch in the... a new continent... Yeah, that is the fight. What honestly. what other fight is there but Dirkus Duplessis and Israel Adesanya? Yeah. Twenty twenty four early. Make it March, please. That's my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> UFC. Make it March. Yeah. Put Mark Hume on that card. Put you put you put Mark Hume on that card. You put um, Chad Hanukum on that card. Mm. You put Cameron. Of course. You put Cameron. Of course. You you could literally build. You put BK. Mm. You go get Don Madge from PFL. You bring him back to UFC. You put yeah. him on that card. You can put any champion from EFC. You can put Luke Michael. You can put whoever on there. You could build a whole main main card with just South African fighters on there. Yeah, no, that'd be amazing. I think that's a great idea. Mm. And I'm much like I I think that's a great yeah, much better than like five five weeks or like six weeks I guess. For for Drekus to to fight Izzy, yeah. The UFC has a chance to make an absolute killing mm. off of this fight. They can build it for the next how far is March? Like eight months. Build it and build your PI, build your closed stadium, do whatever you want. But twenty twenty four, March twenty twenty four, Drekus Diplacy, Israel Adesanya, UFC Africa, UFC. It's got to be that. Yeah. That's all. Mm. But also, just speaking back to to Drikus versus Izzy, I have like a, a new thought. I think that, um, I think that Drikus has a a really good chance, especially after watching his, the Gastelum fight from uh, Gastelum versus Izzy. Mm. I think that like of all Izzy's opponents, um, Drikus has almost the same or the most similar style to Gastelum, mm. and um, 
like Izzy did win, yes, but I I don't I think that he got away with murder on the feet, and like I I I don't know with, with Drikus's power if he has if he gets the same moments that that Gastelum had, I think he catches him mm. a lot with a lot more success than Gastelum, and when he catches him, it's going to mean a lot more. I think Drikus is the first uh, real proper grappler with top control. And a proper submission game that Izzy's ever faced. Okay, mm. Jan Blakovic had some decent top control, but he was heavier and bigger. Which yeah. that's not that fair enough. You still are. You still yeah. did the job. No real submission threat. Robert Whitaker kind of has a submission threat, but also not really. He's more to control and and when I mean I couldn't name you somebody that that has a submission threat. I mean Pereira was able to take him down and keep him down for a long time in the first fight, but not really trying to yeah, go he's for a submissions. Yeah, there's a clip. On YouTube, Submission Kings of Dirkus uh, doing a quintet against five Gracie Baja people. It wasn't supposed to be five. It was supposed to be five versus five, mm. but he wiped out the whole team by himself. Yeah. There's old clips I'm seeing now from like the unanimous uh, was a competition back in the day. Mm. Dirkus is a young kid rolling. He's been doing judo since he was five. There's submissions in judo. He, honestly, I'm thinking sub. And if Izzy can stop the subs because of his Craig Jones work, like working with Craig Jones, yeah, maybe TKO. But I've I put that prediction out there. Second round, he's going to finish Izzy, and I'm sticking to that. So, UFC Africa, UFC Africa, UFC Africa, guys, come on! Yeah, this the South African be... support would be crazy. Well, even people coming down from Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Nigeria is not far. We have a lot of Nigerians in South Africa already. Yeah. So, that dude, that fight would honestly i think just from that cage moment is like a million pay-per-views have already been pre-ordered would, would have been pre-ordered <laughs> yeah um look it's a stretch to say maybe that it you know it could be on par with habib and and, and connor but like a modern day the, like the trends though the trends yeah. that it had the amount of views that it had like i could not scroll through facebook without seeing something about Dricus and cameron yeah like people family members who and never in their life would talk about UFC. We're like, Vern, you've got to get Drikas on your podcast. <laughs> like, I want to know about Drikas. Drikas, Drikas, that. I'm like, guys, yeah. you know. So it, it's it's South Africa. South Africa alone is going crazy. So and, and the world's going crazy. So UFC Africa, come on, guys. I'm gonna say it now for the fifth time, but please. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, um, speaking of South African fighters, I don't know if you if you saw uh, Chad Hanukum is gonna get his chance on uh, Dana White Contender Series. I I didn't actually. That's really ex well. I, I I'm not familiar with his fighting. Is mm. he from an EFC? He was an EFC, and then he went to Brave. Um, mm. His last fight in Brave actually was insane um the finish mm. it was a good card and Corsi and Debele fought on that card as well it was okay. a good yeah it was a good card I, if uh, if I recall correctly it was December last year or November I, I stand corrected but dude straight elbow with mm. the walk off like like he literally elbowed the guy okay. and then he was he fell back and then he just had a walk off I think it was knockout of the night or the year possibly it, it won like a knockout award at Brave mm. but yeah he's getting his, his chance in um at middleweight um, he's fighting some. He's from Australia or New Zealand, I think. He's like eight and O or something, or eight two and O. It's a pretty tough opponent. They're fighting in middleweight. Okay. But listen, man, Chad, that 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 Quan Vessels team, they've got a lot of good fighters, and they have had for years. I mean, they're led by Richie Quan and and Norman Vessels, so the Quan Vessels. That's where Don Madge is affiliated to here and BK. Mm. Um, just absolute geniuses when it comes to like prepping um for fights and and training guys and long long history in mma yeah. so that's i'm really excited he'll be very well prepped he'll be fit How it's going to be interesting he? i think he's 29 i stand corrected um i might just need to check that i'm sorry if you're younger um but or <laughs> you know or older i don't know you gotta always <laughs> say you know but yeah he's i mean he's he's uh i think he's had 11 fights roughly i remember okay. i think it's nine and two Okay, it's been on a really good run. Yeah, that's that. That is good. Yeah, a really good run. I think it's it's. I'm I'm really happy for him, and it's it's again. It's these new wave, and it's South African people mm. that are coming through. Um, you know, I spoke to Cameron uh, on the weekend about Mark Hume as well. Yeah, you know, that's another one that could possibly another person. I mean, if Iga Cabeza can sort his passport stuff out, it's another person to go through. Yeah. If they make UFC Africa, 
You could literally fill a card. I've said it a million times. You could fill a card with all these people. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be good. It's going to yeah. be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's in September, by the way. The, the Contender Series. Oh, okay, awesome. Mm. So close or all around the corner. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Like two months or less. Okay, very exciting. Mm. Um, but the Mark Hume, Mark, Mark Hume as a fighter gets me really excited. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Like um, I, was, I was looking at one of these fights from the EFC. And like, yeah, and I, I don't know. I think he, has, he can have a lot of success. In the EFC, most definitely. UFC. No, most definitely. I mean, Cameron was saying that the, you know, they were training. They had a bit of a target on his back, and and like he was sparring with the guys that side, and didn't lose a single round. I know it's sparring and everything, but I mean, you know, like people know, you you know, when you walk some walk into a gym, whether it's jujitsu, whether it's striking, whatever it is, you know pretty quickly if somebody's good. Yeah, you know, and then you can take varying levels of like testing the people. Like if you if you're good and you know, you can start out slow and then keep going and then go to the next level, next level. So people know very quickly and mm. he's very good. He's very, very good. I mean, we also just have so much momentum now at the moment with like Cameron and Rikas. Mm. Like, yeah, I don't know. We always have like a point to prove. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, listen, so, so Rikas title picture, Cameron dude as well. Like he said in the interview by next year, wants to be in title contention and yeah. uh, that's, very possible yeah absolutely listen the stuff he had to get through to get to this fight like i'm not gonna he has he hasn't disclosed it so i won't say what it is but i mean for him to have the the injury problems that he had and and he mentioned this post fight Dirk has mentioned it the coach Mornifisa mentioned it for him to make it through and put on a performance like that make it look so easy that guy is gonna go i mean next year Title contention for sure, for sure. I mean, if he gets to fight Cody, oh man, I, can't, I hope that happens. Yeah. I hope that happens. Yeah. And also, listen, he took all the risk in that fight as well. Like mm -hmm. he fought a, a debutante. That and, like short notice, he didn't know how that person mm -hmm. fights. I mean, and like so much of their game plan is pre is prepping for the opponent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope I hope the UFC rewards him now and finally puts him like upper upper prelims or main card. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's so much, again, those guys, the tip of the iceberg, mm. you know, BK, I, I'm hoping, I, I, I want to chat to him again soon, mm. see what what's happening with him because because he's supposed to be in the title picture in, in one. Mm. You know, I don't know if they're ducking him or what's happening, but there's another potential champion there. I see Don Madge is training again, you know, yeah, PFL title hopefully for him, you know, yeah. so it's just an exciting time in South Africa and I think someone like the UFC coming here is going to take it over the edge yeah. and give everybody something to to aspire to. Yeah, just uh, it's just anecdotally, um, do you know why why um, Don Madge went out of the UFC? Like, what was I the, do? Yeah, yeah. No, it's on. It's it's. So I did the podcast. I'll link it in the description. Um, it just doing giving him fights. Mm -hmm. He wanted to stay active, basically, and um, I think it was like it was a mixture of you know. Um, the pandemic, I'll just say that rather than the actual word. Um, yeah. A mixture of that, there were some visa issues, you know, um, and he just wasn't getting a fight for like two years. Mm. You know, and then, you know, you're in the prime of your career, you want to keep yeah. fighting and PFL came along, it was interesting. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much the long and, the long and short of it. Of it. Okay. Um, it's on It's on the episode, it's, it's on, the, on the podcast playlist if you want to go have a look. Um, yeah, he he pretty much details it. You can hear it in his own words. Okay. Uh, so yeah, but I, again, I still think he's going to be. No, he's got all the skills. Yeah, yeah. He's OG, OG of South African MMA. I mean, everybody knows that guy's born to be a champion, and he still will be. He yeah. still will be, whether it's PFL or wherever. So, it's gonna be an exciting time, man. Exciting time for us. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that old uh, Jared Kananya and Hamza. There's a rumor of that fight happening. I did. I I feel bad for Kamaru because I'm, I was thinking about it, like it, I don't know. It wasn't a, a good idea for Kamaru to try get that fight in the first place because like I don't know. It's just like is Hamza ever gonna fight at welterweight again? Mm -hmm. And like I can understand why Ham, why well, um, Kamaru doesn't want to move up to middleweight because like he's he's never fought that. That's like changing his career essentially, and then. Does he move down afterwards? Like, how does that work? Mm. Um, and they, I think he just wasted so much time now on, on Khamsat. Mm -hmm. It would just be great to see him, like, fight again. Um, but sorry, that's just on Kamaru. And in terms of this fight, I, I favor Khamsat. I think that, like, 
I don't know. It would be it would be quick work, in my opinion. What mm. do you think? I I don't know, and and that's what's so so good about this is because it will tell us a lot. You know, if 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 Hamzat is able to translate his power and his pressure and do what he does at one seventy to particular, like, I mean, Kananya is so strong. Mm. He is so strong, and he's not an easy fight. Kananya, make no mistake about it, is not an easy fight. He might have losses, yeah, but it's very very tough to fight Kananya. I like this fight because you put him against Usman. He's kind of now, particularly now, expected to win. Especially, I think at you know at one seventy, one seventy or one eighty five. To be honest with you, he's much bigger. But Kananya, he's you know he's going to be a favorite. But Kananya, it's not a joke, man. He's not a joke. And particularly yeah. as I mean against the, Vittori, the yeah, way he, he performed win. against Vittori, he started using his striking rather than his grappling. It's it's going to be interesting. And and again, I like this fight because it's going to tell us exactly where Hamza is. Mm. Like okay. middleweight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, like, the, he won't have the size advantage that he had. He shouldn't. Yeah, he shouldn't. You never know. Mm. You know, it's 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 weird. It's like you could see somebody standing by themselves. Again, like Bo Nickel, you could see him standing by himself. Mm. But until you put him up against someone that is considered big. Yeah. You don't know. Izzy and Drikas. I thought, I thought Drikas w- was, like, as tall as Izzy. I didn't realize how tall Izzy was until I saw him standing next to John Jones. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's another another example of that. So it will tell us a lot. It will definitely tell us a lot. But I mean I'm looking forward to that fight. That's Abu Dhabi, I think. Yeah, they they're looking for it. So but as I saw, like there's a few names that that are, are against Hamzat at the moment. I'm trying to think of the other. There's there's one other name that potential matchups. Yeah, at middleweight. I haven't seen anything else. I've just seen this, and then I've seen. Um, I know Costa was talking yeah, Costa. about it, but that that. It's so not another fight because yeah. yeah, Costa actually just pulled out of his fight now. Yeah, I saw. Um, so they've had to get another. They've had to get another replacement for for UFC 291. Um, yeah, so because Costa pulled out now, um, Alexarov's got to go against the Litze. Mm. So I don't know what's happening with Costa, man. Where it's was like, his last fight as well? Luke Rockhold, wasn't it? Mm, yes, yeah, it was, was a Luke Rockhold yeah, fight was. ages ago. Yeah, ages ago. I mean, I don't know what's happening with him. Mm. You know. I mean, I, to, to be completely fair, maybe a bit brutal. I don't miss like his fights honestly that much. Mm. Yeah, he's inter. Listen, I I miss the entertainment factor because I miss the, the 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 interviews and stuff. He be, he fast became the fu- the funniest guy in MMA. So yeah. that was that was good. But yeah, I mean, he he had this berserker style, and then Izzy, I think Izzy just messed him up in, in mentally because then he lost to Vittori as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's going to be interesting to see. I mean, they, he they fought it light heavyweight and that was a bit of a flop because it was the whole thing about what's your weight and mm. all of that so that's a bit of a that's yeah, a bit of a bummer that he's out of UFC 291 but it will still be a good card it'll yeah still be a very good card absolutely mm. um, and yeah and and, and Jan Blakowicz and uh, uh, Pereira for the title now apparently because Jamal Hill's out with a, a Achilles rupture yeah I saw that but it's been a while I, th- I think he hasn't been able to train for a bit mm. um, yeah shame I mean shame yeah I don't you, know. You've got to, I mean, you've got to. You, the title. That's, you've got to strip the title. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's what Yuri did as well. It's ages. He's going to be out. He's mm-hmm. going to be out for a very long time. So I guess, yeah, Blakovitz and 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 Pereira, man, Pereira's golden goose, bro, at the moment, you know. Yeah. Um, but I like that fight for him for Pereira. I, I like it for Jan, honestly. I like it, yeah, I, I like it for both actually. Yes, yeah. 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 So in it was for varying reasons. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but the. I don't know the shame. Like, um, what's it? Uh, Yuri Prohaska like goes off on, on injury, goes his shoulder, and then like now Jamal. Mm. Yeah, it's like that. Those are the only two in modern history, um, like titles that have been given away because of injury, both mm. in the same weight class. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Blakovic has all the tools. I mean, he's a former champion. Yeah. Pereira champion and middleweight, obviously. Um, it's be interesting to see because Pereira cut a lot of weight to get to 185, mm. like a lot of weight. So he's rangy. He's got. He'll have height. He'll have size. He'll have strength. I mean, obviously, his key to victory is those bombs in his hands. Yeah. Blakovitz has them too. Yeah, that he's got a good ground game and good wrestling. And Pereira's not bad. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting matchup. We all know Pereira's going to have to train for that. So. Yes. Yeah. I think. That's why I like it for for Jan more because like I, I, it would be very interesting to see the size mm. the size difference because I don't know if he's more he's more cruising at his natural weight I just want to see like what does that mean in terms of like the power does it you know 
in terms of like your your weight to power ratio, mm. is that just going to become more equal? And he's like cruising with guys that can actually like hit as hard as him. Mm. Yeah, it'd be really cool to see. It'd be interesting because then it puts Pereira in a unique situation because middleweight and light heavyweight champion. That's I don't don't think anybody's ever done that from the UFC. Dan Henderson came to the UFC from Pride as the middleweight and light heavyweight champion. Mm then lost both his titles in consecutive matches because he fought Anderson Silva and Rampage, I believe. Mm. I don't think anyone's ever done middleweight and, mm -hmm. and light heavyweight. So yeah, um, so, so it'd be interesting to see if he can get that done. Um, but I like that fight. That's a yeah. fun fight. It's it, entertaining. Is it officially for the title? It got leaked oh, Okay. that they were looking at doing that. I haven't actually seen officially if it's for the title yet. Mm. Um, it makes sense. Makes sense, man. It really does make sense because that, that now that UFC... 291 card is just stacked ultra stacked even yeah. more stacked than it was before so good yeah. good fight to have so yeah uh, the we spoke so much about you know especially in our first episode about you know ufc people and and boxers and now francis and ganu is boxing tyson fury in saudi arabia yeah eight figure payday apparently what do you think um yeah i don't i don't, I don't know does it deserve to be an eight-figure payday? Like how? I don't know who's gonna watch that. I will. I personally, I'm not gonna watch that. It doesn't interest me that much. No. Like I don't know. I. Well, okay. Wait. Who do you have winning? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson Fury. Yes. You yeah, could not. Same. You could not. I think. I think. ngannou has got a one in two hundred chance. Got a half a percent chance. Yeah. Punches chance. His power will translate to boxing definitely. What, what gloves are they using? 12. Isn't 12 ounce? I can. Should be. Mm. Uh, and Fury, listen, Tyson Fury is one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, first of all. Yeah. Secondly, he moves like Prince Nassim Hamid at freaking three, <laughs> 300 pounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he literally, he could literally dance around like Prince Nassim Hamid like if he wanted to. Yes. And he does kind of. Yeah. Gypsy style, yeah. very showman. I yeah, mean, honestly. Francis Ngannou, I don't know what his game plan is going to be. I don't, they might make it entertaining for a couple of rounds and yeah. he might just dodge out the way. I, I can't see it going past four rounds. I just can't. I mean, you look at Deontay Wilder being one of the best power punchers in history. Okay, he, he should have won that first fight in my opinion. That, that 10 count was very long. But anyway, he he struggled. Yeah. No, I mean, no, I, I, I do agree. I, I think that like, I don't know, unless Ngannou can throw such haymakers that even with those 12 ounce gloves gets to the guard. But like, I don't know, the head movement of um of Tyson is still as well. It's like, I don't know. He's, mm. I don't think he's going to get to the head. Yeah. And in all honesty. Yeah. Look with McGregor and Mayweather, McGregor had range. Yeah. And he, was, he stuck behind his jab nicely. So every time Mayweather came forward, he stuck behind that jab. But yeah. he got... Tired eventually, and it was a great. It was great for McGregor to go ten rounds of the best ever. But this is not. I don't even think this is going to come close. It's a payday. It's a payday. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, like at, at least maybe, maybe that's just good for 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 Francis because he hasn't fought in in how long now. You know, like I guess it's, it's his best option. Mm. I the don't thing, know. The thing is, though, I don't know, man. If you lose, what does that do to your brand? Not much in the MMO world, probably, but if you get knocked out, what does that do to your chin? What does that do to that bar that we always talk about? Yeah. Like, what does that do to your self-esteem? Like, what does that do? Yeah. What is the upside besides a ginormous payday? And maybe that's what he's after, and maybe he's going to retire, but then it's like a big FU to PFL. It's yeah. like, let me box, and I'm out of here. Mm. So I'm trying to see what the upside is. You know, PFL obviously would do it. They get a lot of lot of cash. Um I would still prefer to see like an Alistair Overeem, um, Francis and Gano too. I don't think it makes that much sense. I don't. I think Francis still like gets him, mm. but like I, I, that to me is more entertaining than him versus Tyson Fury. I don't know. If Fran uh, first off, I don't know if Overeem can even is even in that weight class anymore. He's like as thin as this pole now. Hectic. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. What? Um, overroid and. Uh, I don't want to see him get flatlined again, dude. I feel that guy has been flatlined enough times in his life. So I I, I wouldn't want to see that. I'd rather yeah. watch Fury mm. um, and Garner. And look, again, if you're going from MMA to boxing, you may as well go for the top dog and just do a one-off and that's it. Yeah. You know, there's no point losing to a top 20 person 
So Fury inside four probably easily, I think, if he wants six yeah. maybe. But congrats on your payday, I guess. Ten figures yeah. is ten <laughs> figures is a lot of money. So yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to the weekly preview that we do. Um, this is the UFC Fight Night Aspinall versus Tybura. Um, this one taking place in London, England. The first fight we've got is at featherweight. Um, so we've got Leron Murphy versus Joshua Kulibao. Uh, what are we saying for this one? It was a tough one, but I have Joshua Kulibao. Okay. Um, I think that like... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think they're they're both really good. I was surprised like um to see them at the bottom of the card, but they I don't know, they're both very impressive, put mm. on profess um impressive performances. Um but Josh's only loss is to I forgot, Jalen. To Jalen, yeah. Mm. And at lightweight. Yeah. Mm. Um I don't know. I, I, I have him. Um yeah. I yeah. think he, he does more. I've I've also got that. So I've also got you because his only loss is is to Jalen. Mm. Um I know he's got a draw as well. Um but against um, Jordan, I forget Jordan. Uh, how to yeah how to say that. But I feel he be, he won that fight. Mm. Um, so that that draw should be off of his record. Plus, also, I mean, he's very very well rounded yeah. um, and a good good counter puncher. And I think he's more well rounded than Murphy. Yeah, Murphy, same thing. Um, but I think you know it's it's funny. Murphy's actually the betting favorite in this one. I, yeah, I it, put the note. Yeah, I saw in the notes here. He's on a tear. Like uh, it's not an easy like choice. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, it's going to be an interesting fight. Yeah. Look, I mean, I think he should have lost his draw. To be honest with you. Okay. Um. Yeah. Against um Zuki Goff. Um. But. Yeah, he's got some good scrambles, but he is easily taken down. Mm. And his key to victory is standing. And uh, and I don't know, Josh. Josh is good at counter punching, and Josh is good at, at taking it to the ground. And he's, I think, he's more motivated. I follow him on Instagram as well. I don't know. Um, I don't know how. No, like I just have him on Instagram. Mm. Um, so since since I followed him on Instagram, I've I've seen how how hard he works and how well he's he's been doing. Um, so I've got a bit of a vested interest in it. So I'm also going to go for Josh on this one. So, okay. Then we've got uh, Jai Herbert versus Faris Siam uh, at lightweight. What are you saying for this one? Uh, Siam. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know. I think he has a better skill set. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I've also got Siam here. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Siam is the one that, uh, the guy that Don actually, Don Madge actually beat in 2019 when he oh, broke crazy. his hand. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Yeah. So... Um, I mean, look, uh, he's a great grappler. He's very complete. He's got good range. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think he only he only really loses matches to really good guys like Don. So I think he's 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 probably going to win. Um, I didn't really write down. I think Ziam might be the betting favorite. Um, I did, I I couldn't find any odds. Um, all I knew so like uh, Jay Herbert, I wrote down he doesn't do well against the skilled guys. So I think if you look at all of his losses recently, I mean, he's got like a mixed bag of performances, mm. um, but it's always like top 10. So it's against like Taporia um, mm. and I forgot who else, but I, I think that Siam's almost like in that category, honestly. Mm. See, the thing is, right, he had the Taporia fight and he actually head kicked Taporia in that fight. And and look, it was at lightweight. So Taporia has yeah. been messing around going up and down. And Taporia is just so damn durable, dude. Like he, mm. he put him away in the end. His striking is really good. Yeah. The thing with Taporia though is he had range on Taporia. So that's why he had so much success with a strike and Taporia eventually yeah. got close and, and finished him. He's got very weak grappling, I feel. Mm, that's that's gonna be his down his downfall. And I think Ziam's got got really good grappling. He's much better. Mm. Herbert was unlucky to 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 draw his last fight. He got a point deduction. Um but yeah, okay, Ziam. So we got the same. Yeah. Okay, what you saying for Paul Craig and um Andre Muniz? Um. Oh yeah. I. I. I have Craig. So yeah. Nine versus fourteen. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah. Craig. I think his only loss is. Oh, sorry. No. His only. Loss. No. 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 He's sixteen. Hey, yeah. <laughs> sixteen. Six and one. <laughs> no. No. He's had a couple. Um, but yeah. He. I, I checked out his fight against Jamal Hill when he KO'd him. I don't know. The man's got power. Mm. Like I don't know if. I, I think if he catches anyone with with shots like that, he can take them out. Mm. Um. Then and I mean like he hasn't had that impressive a run now, but I'm sure he has like a point to prove. I. I yeah. I think he takes it. Two fight losing streak, eh? That's yeah. what it is. That that's his run. Yes, yeah. yeah. Look, he's got dangerous jujitsu, um, and I feel that's his key to victory. And I think he he uses that a lot. I mean, he's pulled guard in a lot of his fights. Yeah. Um, that Craig has. I don't have Craig winning this one. Um, I've actually got Muniz winning this one. Mm -hmm. Um, so he in in recent times he's only lost to Brendan Allen. Um, yeah. tough fight. And he had nine wins prior to that. Mm. So he was on a good run. Um, twenty three and five is a good record. 
Yeah. Uh, but I think his BJJ is good enough um, to stop Craig. Craig is, is like sk- solid on the ground, like really, really good jiu-jitsu. Mm. But I think Muniz is a better striker. I've got him to win via TKO. Um, I didn't really, we didn't really say how the other two were going to win. Um, but I'm thinking decision for Josh and TKO possibly or decision for Ziam. Okay. I'm thinking. Um, and well, TKO for Muniz. I, I have it here. I, I said Ziam. Um, by submission, and it was I didn't have Murphy. Sorry, I had Josh by TKO. Yeah, actually, that's a good shot for ZMA. Submission's a good one. He's mm-hmm. he's very good at submissions. Okay, so the next fight we've got is uh, Nathan Wood and Andre Feely. Who you got for this one? Nathan Wood. Yeah, yeah. I think Feely's yeah on, on, on like a bit of a bad run, and like unfortunately, mm. who Philly? Yeah, yeah. Philly's uh, two, three, and one in his last six. Mm. It's a bit older. He's he's never really got his career going. To be honest with you, I mean, he had a big name. Because I think it was him and oh yeah, it was him and Artem in mm. uh, the Ultimate Fighter where where he said to where Artem said to Faber like me and your boy Philly after this and that's kind of where yeah, I got yeah. to know about him. Yeah, but yeah, not a good run. Um, twenty two and nine total career, all the skills mm. to be a good fighter and is a good fighter. But yes. I think Nathan Wood two fight win streak home advantage. He's on a he's got yeah, a lot more momentum. Yeah, yeah, too strong. So we're both going Wood on that one. We have got Molly McCann versus uh, Julia. Stoliarenko, what are you saying for this one? Um, Molly McCann, but like, I mean, I I don't know. I'm not that stoked for this fight. I don't know how this is. Um, it's a filler match. Yeah, li- yeah. It's, it's literally much. a filler match. Yeah, I mean, it's it doesn't feel that competitive. I think they're both lackluster fighters, to be honest. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think they're just giving Molly like a a name to beat the hype train. Yeah, I think so too. In in the UK, mm. I mean, come on. Yeah. Look, she <laughs> she's okay, but I, that aside, she's better all round. I think she's going to go yes, for TKO. Yes, absolutely. But come on, guys. Julia is one and four in her last five. She's 10, seven, and two. And she does not look the caliber to be the fight before the main event. Yes, yeah. And I don't see how they're above Josh and uh, the, the the first the yeah. opening fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, it's a big name. Molly McCann, TKO, I'm going for that. Mm. Aspinall versus Tybura, what are you saying? Aspinall. Yeah. Aspinall, yeah. So he's the betting, like, he's a massive favorite. It's like f- minus 500 odds or something crazy. Yeah. 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 I've, I've also got Aspinall. Uh, what are you saying? For, why are you saying Aspinall? I, I think he's a, Other than being yeah, such yeah. a big betting favorite and being common sense, but, yes, like, what are you saying? Yeah. Why? I, I think, I don't know, if he gets him to the, I don't know, he's just good all around. If he gets him to the ground, I think he has an advantage. If it stays standing, I think, okay, that's that's less of a direct advantage, but I don't think it stays standing for long. Mm. Yeah. Look, um, Tabura is more, more experienced. I mean, 24 and seven versus Aspinall's 12 and three. Aspinall's been stop start. He's had unlucky. I mean, the, the last fight where he got injured, it was very unlucky. Yeah. But dude, he's agile. He's fast. He's got great elbows. Yeah. And like you say, he's good all over. I think he's going to pressure him. Um, this is kind of, I'm surprised at those odds, to be honest, like he should be a favorite, but that's like overwhelming yeah, yeah. landslide favorite. You get these dramatic ones recently. I don't know what it is. Like same with the Drekus, like the proposed betting odds for him versus Izzy was Did, yeah. like three, three, three to, one. to one. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Tabur is not bad. He's beaten some good fighters, but he's like very slow and lethargic. Mm. Um, and, and Harris, Walt Harris, uh, Mr. Usada now, <laughs> pieced him up, dude. Pieced him up on the feet. Mm. And if that's Aspinall, mm. that's, that's over for him. So yeah, definitely. I think we're both going Aspinall. So the only fight that we have different this week is uh, Paul, Paul Craig. Craig and Andre Muniz. So yeah. come on, Mr. Muniz <laughs> and Mr. Craig, you guys yeah. are. So what's that? Yeah, that's. We've got the rest the same. So yeah, it's going to be. There should. There, surely not. Yes, there has there to be is, a winner. Unless, unless a they have a draw, which yeah. they haven't had before, or the Herbert has. But I think if we were going different names on the uh, Kulabau and Murphy fight, seeing as they both had draws recently, yeah. maybe. But yeah. Cool. Okay. So I think that uh, concludes the show for this week. Um, Please, as we said, please go look for our Spotify down below. Uh, Please make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, um, all of that, and um, help us get to a thousand subscribers. And let us know your thoughts on the show and what you want to see next week. Um, Until then, guys, have a good week. Cheers. Cheers.